What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Now all Lions fans know that we have been struggling with injuries for you know quite a while even dating back to last season but especially in the beginning of this season we've had a lot of players either play very little early in the season or not play at all and that has really hindered the Detroit Lions and that has really hurt them because you know obviously if their starters if their you know big contributors are out their team is not going to be as successful. However in recent days the Detroit Lions have started to become healthier you know players have started practicing more players have started doing more with the team and they just have all around started to get healthy and they are trying to get more talent back on the field for them and this could not be coming at a more perfect time for the Detroit Lions. So in today's video, I just want to talk about the Lions injury concerns a little bit. Who's, you know, getting healthy, who's coming back next week, and why the Detroit Lions, you know, getting healthy at this time is the perfect scenario for the Lions. Now, before we do get into the video, if you are new to the channel and are enjoying this Detroit Lions content, consider liking the videos and subscribing to the channel as it takes only two seconds out of your day to do so. And helps me push this channel out to more Detroit Lions fans such as yourselves. So if you could do that, I would be greatly appreciative for it and it will help the channel out a lot. Now with all that being said, let's get into talking about why the Detroit Lions are getting healthy at the perfect time in this NFL season. Now, obviously, it is no secret that the Detroit Lions have held their head, their health concerns as, you know, Kenny Galladay hasn't played yet, Big V hasn't played yet, you know, Desmond Trufant has played very little time, and, you know, there have been other contributors and other players that were, other players that would be contributors if they were healthy that have just not been able to see the field a lot yet in the 2020 season. However, the Detroit Lions have had a lot of players that were out last week that didn't practice like last week come in and practice early in the week, and they're looking to get back on track and they are looking to get on the football field. Now, Desmond Trufant is the only player that did not practice Wednesday, and I do not have the stats thir for Thursday's practice day yet, but they will be on the screen now if, you know, if I do have them by the time I'm editing this video. So, you know, ever, as far as yesterday, a lot of players were practicing, a lot of players were in the team drills, a lot of players were playing with the team and practicing, even if it was limited, they were still doing more than they had done in previous weeks. You know, that includes guys like Kenny Galladay, who hasn't played yet, Big V, who hasn't played yet, um, um, who else was on there? Nick Williams was practicing, who missed last week. And there's a couple other contributors, Hunter Bryant, who hasn't played yet. You know, there are a bunch of contributors on that list that are starting to get healthy, and they are starting to practice more and more every single day, and they are trying to get back out on that football field to help the Lions win football games. Now, I mentioned that this comes at a perfect time for the Detroit Lions. Now, obviously, the Detroit Lions are 0-2, and, and they face, you know, probably their toughest stretch of the schedule in these first four weeks, as the Bears are undefeated, and we lost to them. The Packers are undefeated, and we we lost to them. The Cardinals are undefeated and we play them on Sunday. And the Saints are 1-1, one one, but they are a very good football team. They've been a very good football team for quite a while. And that will be a tough matchup as well. So these first four games are probably the toughest stretch that the Lions have in this, you know, in this NFL season. And bringing back as much talent as possible to maybe get one victory out of these first four games is huge for the Detroit Lions. Because if they can get, if they can even go 1-3 in, in this stretch of four, that is going to look a lot better and they're going to be a lot better off than if they were 0-4. Because after the bye week, the Lions have a bye week after the Saints game in week five. You know, after the bye week, the level of competition that the Detroit Lions play drops significantly after that bye week. You know, we play, we go from playing the undefeated Bears, the undefeated Packers, the undefeated Cardinals, and the one and, you know, probably two and one Saints at the time, to going and playing the one and one Jaguars, who are definitely better than expected, but they are a significantly worse competition. They are significantly weaker than weeks one through four. We then go on to play the two, the 0 and 2 Atlanta Falcons, who are having their own struggles with holding fourth quarter leads, as always. We're going to play the one and one Colts, who are tied with, or, you know, who have thrown the second most interceptions in the NFL. They have an okay offense and they have a pretty good defense, but again, they're still one and one and they are having their own struggles. They are significantly weaker than the first four weeks. We play the Minnesota Vikings who are having a lot of defensive and offensive struggles. They are 0-2 and, and look, you know, not as bad as the Lions, but they look pretty bad. We go on and play the Washington football team who, just like the Jaguars, is one and one, but they are significantly weaker than the Saints, than the Cardinals, than the Packers. You know, that should be a winnable football game for the Detroit Lions. We go on and play the Carolina Carolina Panthers who are 0-2 and have a very young and inexperienced defense. We go on to play the Texans who have an 0-2 record and are 
you know, exp I expect them to be better because they've played the Chiefs and the Ravens to open their season, which is really, really rough. But, you know, they're 0-2. They are having their struggles without DeAndre Hopkins, and they do not look like the same playoff contender that they were even a season ago. And then we obviously play the Vikings again later in the season, and we play a couple other teams that, you know, should be winnable football games. So the Detroit Lions are getting healthier as, you know, as the days go on. They're returning Kenny Galladay, the number one wide receiver. They're returning Big V, the number one right tackle. Hunter Bryant is returning. He's getting out to the football field and should be a huge threat in the receiving game. You know, Nick Williams, a guy that we brought in this offseason to try to get some interior pressure, is coming back off from a shoulder injury. And, you know, there have been guys that have been injured throughout the season that are finally coming back and are finally going to be able to contribute to this Detroit Lions squad. And for the first time in the season, we are going to be able to see this Detroit Lions squad at full strength. We're going to be able to see, you know, almost every starter out there for the Detroit Lions. Desmond Trufant being one of the only exceptions. But there we have kind of a, you know, not a stacked secondary, but we have a very solid secondary with Amani and Okuda and, you know, some of the depth we have there. We have an okay secondary there. So, you know, Desmond Trufant is obviously a loss, but, you know, we have the talent at that position to replace Trufant and to, you know, make up for that deficit. And even Trufant should be back in a week or two. You know, not to mention that Joe Dahl should be back after the bye, who played really good in week one and unfortunately got placed on an injured reserve. We get Justin Coleman back after week five, who was placed on injured reserve. He should be back against the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, we are returning a lot of starters. We are returning a lot of players by week six after that bye week. We're going to have that bye week to get healthy. We're going to have that bye week to make sure everybody is back on the football field. And, you know, if we are one in three or, you know, even if we're 0 and 4, that looks really bad. But I think that seven to eight game stretch after the bye week from Jacksonville all the way down to the Texans game, they are all winnable football games. Now, obviously, they're not going to win all those football games because, you know, they're not a great team. There's a reason that they're 0 and 2. There's a reason that we everybody wants Matt Patricia to be fired. There's a reason that you know the offense goes from clicking one moment to being stagnant the next you know the lions have their problems and i'm not saying they're going to go seven and zero in this series i'm not going to say that they're going to start the season seven and four after starting the season zero and four in their first four games but you know all of these games all of the you know after the bye week those seven to eight games are all winnable football games for the lions they can very realistically beat the jags they can very realistically beat the falcons the colts the vikings the football team the panthers the texans you know the vikings again later in the season because all of those teams have struggled and I know that all of those teams, kind of like the Lions, have shown flashes, they've shown the potential, but just like the Lions, they have not been able to put together enough to win football games. Heck, the Atlanta Falcons blow a bigger lead than the Detroit Lions did, and, you know, the, to the Cowboys, they were up with a ton. They were up by, like, 20-something points, and they, you know, just like the Lions, gave up a huge lead to the Cowboys to lose that game 42-39. You know, that should be a very winnable football game. They have a lot of fourth-quarter struggles. You think the Lions are bad? Go watch the Falcons, because I know it's a meme, but they, they actually do give up a lot of late quarter leads so you know that you know two teams that give up fourth quarter leads a lot that should be an interesting game and you know all of those teams that i just listed the viking or the jags the falcons colts vikings football team panthers texans all of those are winnable football games and all of those games are games that i'm going to get go into as a lions fan and you know have the confidence that we can win these first four weeks have been rough these first two weeks have been rough and i expect the next two weeks to be rough as well because we are playing superior competition we are playing teams that have more talent than us we are playing teams that are coaching better than us and as I said the other day coaching means everything in the NFL and you know if your team is being coached worse than the team you were playing nine times out of ten you're going to lose that football game however you know going into week five going into week six week seven the Lions are playing lesser competition than what they played in the first four weeks they're not playing undefeated teams anymore that are on a hot streak and you know these games are winnable the Lions are getting better they're getting more familiar with their system they're getting more familiar with their defense their players are getting familiar with each other and you know they're getting healthier they're getting more talent to add to this roster and you know as the Detroit Lions are getting better throughout the season their competition their level of competition and the level of play that they are going against is dropping you know not significantly but it is dropping a noticeable amount where you know we're going from playing the Saints that you know could very realistically be undefeated right now and they could have been undefeated up till week four you know that is a team that will make the playoffs. The Saints and the Cardinals are teams that are going to be pushing for the playoffs. And, you know, obviously the Cardinals are undefeated right now. And the Saints are Super Bowl contenders every single year. We're going from those teams, those legitimate playoff, maybe Super Bowl contenders, down to the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are expected to be one of the worst teams in the NFL. The Falcons, who look like they have one of the worst defenses in the NFL. The Colts, who are 1-1. One and, one, and the only victory is coming against an 0-2 Vikings team. You know, we are going against lesser competition as our team gets better, as our team gets healthier. And as these players come back, 
as the talent comes back, even with lesser coaching, even with poorer coaching staffs, the Lions should still be able to win a few of these games. The Lions could realistically go 500 or above in this seven week span. And, you know, as a Lions fan who, you know, is waiting for that first victory, a victory that hasn't come in over, you know, I can't even know how long, 11 NFL weeks plus playoffs plus the offseason. You know, I've been waiting for this win for a long time, and I think that it can realistically happen, and a lot of them can happen in this seven-week span. So I think the Detroit Lions are getting healthy at a perfect time. They're getting players back this week. They're going to be getting players back next week. They're going to have a bye week where Justin Coleman and Joe Dahl can return, where Desmond Trufi will hopefully be healthy enough to return, and then they will go out there at pretty much full strength with, you know, hopefully no injuries unless something happens in practice, but they will go out there with, you know, a full strength roster and we will finally be able to see this Detroit Lions team at its peak. We will finally be able to see them with every single starter out there. And we're going to be able to see the vision that Matt Patricia had for this defense and we're going to be able to see exactly how it is being ran with all the starters in there. Now, you know, obviously, as I said, we're not going to win all of these games. I wouldn't be surprised if we lose to the Texans. It, it, honestly, at this point, it doesn't surprise me if we lose to any team. We could lose to the we could lose to the football team or like the Vikings and that wouldn't surprise me because we're the Lions. But like, you know, these games are winnable. These games are games that the Detroit Lions should have confidence going into, and these are games that the Detroit Lions fan base should have confidence going into that they can realistically walk out with a victory, and it wouldn't be that surprising. The Detroit Lions, after their bye week, go into a stretch where they do not play a team above 500 right now until week, like... 13 or something. You know, it is a long stretch of teams that, you know, obviously a lot can change between now and week five. But as of right now, looking at the rest of the schedule, after week five, we do not play a team above 500 until we reunite with the Chicago Bears in week 13. You know, so you know, it looks rough now for sure. And I understand that Lions fans are frustrated and they think we're going to lose a lot of football games this year. But going into week six with a fully healthy roster, with teams, with a Lions team that has bonded, that has grown, that has worked out some of the kinks, hopefully in their offensive and defensive schemes. These, you know, this, the season is going to get better for the Lions. It is going to get better because it has to. We cannot get worse at this point. We're already one of the worst defenses in football. We're already just an average offense. And, you know, we have played very good competition. You know, granted, the Bears are 2-0, and as I said the Packers are 2-0, the Cardinals are 2-0, the Saints are Super Bowl contenders every year, and they are still a very good franchise. You know, we are playing elite competition right now outside the Chicago Bears. The season is going to get better. The stats are going to get better. The record is going to get better. And while I'm not going to guarantee that we're going to make the playoffs, I'm not going to say that, yeah, we're going to go on a 7-0 run, and then we're going to have momentum going against the Bears, and we're going to win that game. And then we're going to have momentum going into the Buccaneers, and the Titans, and the Packers, and the Vikings after that, and we're going to finish the season, you know, 14-2 and or whatever. We're not going to finish the season 12-4. But, you know, I do think that this stretch of games coming up is going to be a good opportunity for the Lions to build confidence, for the Lions to work out some of the kinks against inferior op opponents. And I think it's going to give the Lions a great opportunity to see what this team can actually look like when they are at full strength, when they are at full capacity, and they do not have significant players missing games. Now, with that being said, that is all I got for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. If there is Lions this before tomorrow, I will obviously make a video letting everybody know, and it could very well happen as the Detroit Lions are looking at signing Jabal Sheard at this point in time. So if that happens, I will make a video. And obviously, if anything else happens, I will make a video on that as well. But with all that being said, that is all I got for you guys today. If there is no Lions news before tomorrow, then I will see you all tomorrow with more Detroit Lions content. But until then, that is all I got for you guys right now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you all tomorrow with more Lions content. Bye, guys.